you guys. Okay, so I am back with another video and today I've made some notes to help some of these new plant parents, uh, COVID plant parents, prepare for their first winter. Uh, but before I start, I wanted to show you guys my bird of paradise flowered. I cut it off so that I could keep it for a little longer in some water, but it's so pretty. <laughs> so uh, I didn't think they could flower inside. Turns out they can flower inside. So there we go. Orange bird of paradise, if anybody's wondering. Okay, now that we got that humble brag out of the way. Um, okay, so for all the new plant parents out there, I've seen tons of panic. And as I've mentioned before, I'm up in Canada, one of the most northern cities in Canada. So our daylight hours over the winter become extremely limited. So I've seen tons of people in my local plant groups worrying about their first winter with plants. So I wanted to help out some of those new plant parents. So I came up with five main tips to survive the winter with plants. And I wanna start off by saying it's easier than you think, so don't freak out. Okay, so number one, bugs. So a lot of plant parents keep their beautiful plants outdoors, giving them that nice natural sunlight, a nice breeze, I'm telling you right now, if you bring that beautiful palm inside, you are asking for a bug nightmare. So if you are bringing any plants from outside in, hose them down really good. You're going to want to treat them, soak them dish soap works like a Safer's end all. Give them a good treatment because you, I promise you, you are going to be bringing in spider mites and thrips and you'll bring a cocktail in there. So don't infect everybody inside. Clean those plants off really, really well. When you're bringing them inside, even isolate them for a little bit, just to make sure. Number two is watering. And this is a huge one that I wish I could get out, like PSA, lose the watering schedule. So I've met a lot of people who say, oh, I water on Mondays or, oh, I water on Fridays. Lose that. Um, your plants, each one of them has different requirements. Each one of them will dry out differently. And in the winter, they will dry out much, much slower. So if you're watering once a week in the summer, you're going to really want to stretch those waterings out. Your best friend is your finger. Dig it in. Make sure that that soil is truthfully dry before you're giving your plants another watering. You are way, way better off underwatering than overwatering. You're going to want to let those plants have a little bit of before you're giving them the juice. So get used to learning what each plant needs. Lift the pot. Is it light? Is it heavy? Put your finger in the soil. Is it dry? Is it still moist? You're going to want to learn each one and you're going to really want to spread those waterings out more. With less sun, less heat, the plants will not dry out as fast. Number three I have on the list is light. So I've seen tons of people worrying, like, do I need grow lights? What do I do? Should I change all my bulbs with grow lights? And truthfully, a deep dive into grow lights is a whole nother video, but don't fear. You don't have to run out and buy hundreds of dollars worth of grow lights. Your plants will adapt. The sunlight hours shrinking down, it happens gradually. We get used to it and so do the plants. So your plants will adapt. Uh, they'll get used to the fact that the sun sets at 4 p.m. here and they'll be okay with it. You will not see vigorous growth over the winters. So don't worry, just because you haven't seen a new reef in a month doesn't mean that you're a bad plant parent. It just means that your plants are now entering that winter dormancy and that's okay. Number four is humidity. So as it gets colder, here it also gets drier. Be considerate of your calatheas. So group those high humidity plants together, put some pebble trays down, maybe invest in a humidifier. Um, misting doesn't do a whole lot unless you're doing it all the time. And if you're doing it all the time, you're maybe even opening yourself up to some funguses like misting. So I recommend pebble trays. They're cheap, they're easy, and they're low maintenance. You just put a little, a little tray, fill it with some rocks, keep some water in it. And as it naturally evaporates, it'll just raise the relative humidity. I prefer relative humidity over 
moist leaves, wet soil, I, I prefer just trying to raise it naturally. Uh, for those calatheas, just keeping it as generally as humid as possible. Like, just don't let them get to like that Edmonton 30% humidity over the winter. Like, just try and keep them as high as possible. And you, being a plant parent, will know if something's wrong. You'll see those edges crisping. You'll know that they need a little something extra. Don't freak out. Again, you'll, you can watch them and you can see. So if you see somebody having a problem, you know what to do, you can fix it. It doesn't happen overnight, you have some time. And finally, number five, fertilizer. I fertilize like crazy, it really helps lush everything up. Uh, I use like a liquid fertilizer, some people use slow release, some people, there's tons of different kinds. Stop over the winter. Just give your plants a few months off, well, well I mean, where I am, it's like six months off, but I will stop fertilizing probably in end of October and then I won't fertilize again until like maybe early April. So as the sunlight hours dwindle, as they need less, they're going dormant, that's when I just let them be and I wait. It's patience. They will still look beautiful for you all winter long. You just won't have that same vigorous growth that you had in the summer. And that's okay. So basically, that is all five of the points that I came up with. Hopefully this has helped relax some people in that all your new plant babies that you've acquired since we've all been trapped inside thanks to COVID will not die on you if you don't invest in a solar farm and, uh, you know, $300 worth of grow lights. They'll be okay. <laughs> so leave any other questions you have for me below. I'll be responding to any questions you guys have, as well as feel free to leave any other tips that you have for surviving winter as a plant parent down below so that if someone has any questions, they can search down there. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye you guys.